able to help. President Obama today meeting with his national security team, a sixth time they discussed the course of action for American policy in Afghanistan and more to come. Joining me now for more on the choices that face the president in Afghanistan, Jed Babin, who is former Under Secretary of Defense, editor of Human Events. Good to have you with us. Herb London, president of the Hudson Institute. Good to have you here. And also Alex Thier. Good to have you here, Afghanistan and Pakistan director at the U.S. Institute for Peace. Let's begin with John Kerry, just returned from both Pakistan and Afghanistan. And if you will, this is what he had to say. Deploying additional troops won't result in sustainable gains if the Afghan security, civilian, and governance capacity isn't there. And right now, as our generals will tell you, in many places, too many places, it isn't. Well, there obviously is a difference uh, between uh, Senator Kerry and, and we'll just limit this to Senator Kerry and General uh, McChrystal. Alex, what is the implication of what he's saying? Well, I think that the critical point that he's making is that without a real Afghan partner, we can't succeed. We can have as many troops, we can have as much money as we want in Afghanistan, but ultimately at the end of the day, and this is in counterinsurgency doctrine and it's in common sense, that unless it's Afghans who are leading, then we're not going to succeed. Well, I think that there's an awful lot that the United States can do. My feeling is that the president will deploy forces, probably something on the order of 30 or 35, not the 40,000 that Mr. McChrystal or General McChrystal has asked for. But my feeling is that there is something that you can do in restoring some sort of security in the urban areas. But a lot depends not merely on Karzai. A lot depends on President Obama. Does he have the will to really engage in this war? Is it sustainable? Does he have the desire to make this a success? That, I think, is really what's critical. Do you have the answers to those questions, Jeff? I don't think anybody does, Lou, but let me just respectfully disagree with Alex. The counterinsurgency doctrine does not require a stable government to be a partner, even a legitimate government to be a partner. The real issue is, can you establish security in enough places to give the people the ability to create the government that they want if they don't already have it? So you have a situation here where the question is, are you going to fight or not? Is Afghanistan something that we have to fight for or not? And on that determination will rest the consideration of further troops and whether we have an election or not in Afghanistan. What do you think? Will, should the president send more troops? I think he has to. I think there's no one that has better information than General McChrystal and his boss, General Petraeus. Uh, they are decided that they have to do a counterinsurgency strategy with or without the election. And I don't think anybody else can say that unless the president wants to change the objective, we have to do anything else. Okay. Would, Jed's, would Jed's view be more persuasive if we had not just gone through more than eight years of generals with a lot of information, uh, obviously uh, being incapable of leading their troops to victory uh, and success in Afghanistan, Alex? Well, the point that we have spent eight years in Afghanistan is critical to this debate because what worked in 2001 or what might have worked in 2001 is very hard to accomplish in 2009. What we need to do that we have not done up until this point is to place proper emphasis not only on the military aspect of this conflict but on the ability to deliver goods and services to the Afghan people which also includes a government that they can depend on and includes a sense of justice. I lived in Afghanistan for four years during the Civil War in the 1990s. I watched the Taliban take over the country the first time. They didn't take over the country because people loved their ideology. They took over because people were sick of the warlords and the privation that they faced and the intimidation that they faced under those people. So unless we can replace that with something better, then we might as well get out. But the counterinsurgency strategy is very much dependent on creating some kind of security in the urban areas, precisely the point that Alex is making. If you're going to have security, it's going to be necessary for American troops to suggest to people in urban areas like Kabul that you have the American people, the American people, the American president, and the American military standing behind you. If you have a president that dithers, a president who's not sure, a president suffering from a hamlet like Bose, it's not going to be successful. But if you want to win this war, we can win it. You may remember the conversations that took place prior to the surge in Iraq, not unlike the conversations that are taking place now. If the president is keen on making a success out of this, I think it can be successful. 
And we have a situation that's vastly different. The mission in 2001 was to topple the Taliban regime. That was done rather handily. The mission now is something else. The president has to make a decision. General McChrystal said we could lose this war within 12 months, be a situation where the insurgency was no longer, we were no longer capable of defeating it. That tw uh, 12 months has already gone one-sixth of it. General McChrystal also said that he could not guarantee military victory with 40,000 more troops simply save off failure. That is not the kind of uh, uh, ringing uh, rhetoric wants to hear, one wants to hear from one of our leaders who's responsible for the lives of right now uh, 40,000 of our troops, uh, possibly as many as 80,000, 100,000 later. Look, the challenge in Afghanistan is enormously complicated. A lot of the country is insecure right now. You have the biggest drug trafficking in the world coming out still of Afghanistan. Still after eight years. Still Bobby after Field, still bloom, oh. traffic. Uh, well, no, in fact, it's gotten far worse yes. in the last eight years. Uh, and so in order to make a difference, it's not just about the numbers. We've been pushing up the numbers in Afghanistan steadily over the last couple of years. It's really about what you do with them. Are you using the forces properly? And do you have an Afghan partner that's going to stand next to you and convince the Afghan people that the future lies with you instead of with the insurgents? Well, let me ask you this. If you can all put this into one sentence, I'm going to just ask you and you can tell me. What is the point? of the United States military in Afghanistan. In my judgment, the point is not only to provide the security in Afghanistan, but to make sure that the Afghan government is sufficiently stable so we do not have any kind of disruption in Pakistan and nuclear weapons in the hands Those of Al-Qaeda. Those are ten words. <laughs> Thanks for for trying. That's right. <laughs> to hold Afghanistan in a, in a holding action to protect Pakistan until we decide on what our ultimate goal is in this war, which we have not yet done. I believe it's a clear goal. It's to prevent the collapse of Afghanistan and or Pakistan, which would endanger American national security dramatically. How? Because Afghanistan was home to Al-Qaeda and could again become home to Al-Qaeda. Pakistan is currently home to Al-Qaeda and has 50 to 80 nuclear weapons. If they fall into the hand of militants, then we're all in a lot more trouble than we're imagining today. This isn't a 21st century domino theory, is it? Uh, I don't believe so. I all think right. the reality is, is clear. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Coming up next, a new poll shows for the first time in years, conservatives outnumber both moderates and liberals. And Harry Reid's gamble, the Senate Majority Leader now says there will be a public option, an opt-out public option, one that Nancy Pelosi says should be called a competitive option or a consumer option.